To use the world well, to be able to stop wasting it and our time in it, we need to relearn our being in it. I would like to start off with this quote from the late great sci-fi author Ursula K. Le Guin. This quote is especially important because we are living in a time where we are not using the world so well. Countless social environmental issues have shown us that we are reaching certain ecological limits, living in a precarious situation. These are not isolated events. It gives us this opportunity to recognize the human impact on our natural systems. And so we're using collaborative survival as a way to understand what new relationships can look like. This comes from anthropologist Anna Sings, in which she traces stories of matsutake, a type of mushroom, to draw new connections between natural and human systems, blurring this divide between natural and human um, forms. Um, despite environmental damage and the disconnections formed by late capitalism, Matsutake thrives and will thrive, emerging through, from the ruins through symbiotic relationships. As such, we can use this time to reorient ourselves towards a more than human world where we recognize our interdependence and reliance upon non-humans. What other relationships can we form when we recognize how we rely on one another? This has informed the building of our tools that reflect collaborative survival. It's a design inquiry project that reflects on the roles that technology may serve to understand non-humans, in in, and in our case, fungi, through the form of three provocations. So here's a timeline of sorts, the way that design inquiry usually looks. Rather than a straightforward thing, it's kind of a wandering, unwieldy path. So I'm gonna start here at the beginning, at this pink box, which says, Jen starts mushroom hunting. So I started mushroom hunting in 2015, and it comes from a lifelong interest of looking at things. I moved to a new home in 2015, and this prompted me to question who I am, who, I, who am I surrounded by? And it kind of led me to join a mushroom club to meet others that asked similar questions. And I was a bit opportunistic in using this as a point of subject in my thesis, because it also gave me an opportunity to spend more time outside than in the lab. So what I'm focusing on in this project is the process of, my, of the mycological foray, in which amateurs, um, citizen scientists, professionals, um, people who are interested in mushrooms for eating, for aesthetics, for other purposes, come together to collect, identify, and catalog mushrooms, working together to understand what this thing is that we find. And the more I learn, the more fascinated I've become. You start at the mushroom, but that's almost just the tip of the iceberg. You, know, you, have, um, you have, we can start to see new relationships and collaborations form. With mycelium networks, the vegetative root at the, that comes from the mushrooms, it becomes interlaced and entangled in the earth, creating this architecture of information, collection, storage, and distribution between other fungi, trees, and other organisms. Fungi also live in our body, helping us with our everyday processes, yet could possibly be quite harmful if presented with the right circumstances. This is important to understand what makes us human. So in getting to know fungi, we get to know ourselves. This brings me to a twofold research question. In one, how can a design research process be used to understand alternative relationships and responsibilities with natural systems? And how can technologies be designed to forge, mediate, and sustain relationships between humans and the more than human world? So we're drawing from collaborative survival and in doing so, we're thinking specifically about the arts of noticing as a way to begin to observe what these collaborations may look like. Again, we're drawing from Anna Singh, in which she uses the process of arts of, arts of noticing to get to know Matsutake through multi-sided ethnographic tracing. But we're not limited to just seeing here. We are interested in multi-sensory examinations to understand, what these, um, to understand these ecosystems. And thus, we're drawing from Stacey Kuznetsov's work, sitting in the front row, on work on natu nurturing natural sensors and looking at biomarkers as a way of gaining information through direct contact and engagement. Things such as, what does a mark on a leaf tell you? What does the weight of a beehive let you know about what's inside? Or even the smell of water to understand the health of fish. These are suggestions for new avenues for building new forms of sensors. How can these practices inform a new way of looking at the world? So for us, we're drawing from practices of a mushroom foray to create prototypes as provocations that ask our initial research questions. 
For us, we're interested in being able to spark the imagination for new roles of technology in a precarious present. And we're drawing broadly from um, three, different, three different areas, Sustain sustainable HCI and understanding how we can possibly maintain human ecological balances through computing and design, design in non-humans in which um, there's research to being done in animal computer interaction, designing for cohabitations and co-productions, and designing for new sensitivities when there is no more business as usual. Furthermore, we're drawing from a tradition of design research, drawing upon methods that are both reflective and critical. So rather than testing a hypothesis or soliciting user feedback, we're interested in what, how to conceptualize the design practice to understand theory. And here we are kind of located in the center, kind of this amorphous shifting that happens when you start to blend, to blend different areas. So I'd like to now share with you some initial ideations, exploration of con materials and concepts as a form of sketching to combine these, these ideas that start to form. So from um, left to right, here we have sleeve storage, a quick uh, version of what it mean, what, how can we start to carry things without hindering ourselves. A hat basket, is it a hat? Is it a basket? It could be both. And then the soil sample shoe in which um, using the leverage of the step throughout a hike, it will actually collect a small bit of, um, of soil and that soil can actually contain a lot, a lot of information. So these, from these really quick initial ideations, we gathered um, a, lot of, a lot of interesting uh, insights, some including place what, uh, how does placement of body affect where, um, what, uh, what you might know, something versus placing something on the head versus placing something on the arm, placing something on the foot. Materials, we are building for an outdoor context, so thinking about what things might prevent or, or things, things that we might choose to use in this outdoor context. And then this act of noticing, what happens when we start to understand that each step that we take is going to collect a bit of information? What does that lead us to notice? So these informed the building of our three provocations. In order to notice something, you must be motivated to look. This is our first provocation, the data harvest. It's a wearable tactile map that guides its wares to locations where fungi growth has, been previously, has previously been found. So a person might be wearing this in the woods, and then it's connected to a map that can be accessed by other interested parties Vibration motors located around the collar nudge the wear in the direction of these locations. This attunes the wear to environmental aspects of where mushrooms can be found based on community form knowledge. Even if nothing is, a, is found, is it still valuable? Well, I really, I think so, because in keeping an eye out, we have this ability to notice despite knowing what you may find. For spore stepper, Mushrooms might be the main specimen that you find on a foray, but they might not always be around. Soil sampling is a practice to gain a picture of what is in the environment by collecting bits and pieces of mycelium and spores. It also helps us think about time scales, what we may find now and what we might find later, and what information we choose to collect. This is built on a walking stick with a chamber on the bottom specifically designed to collect soil. Um, post foray, the sample can be germinated or DNA sequenced to determine what fungi species may be present. And this is something that I brought out into the field with me. And it was an interesting use, uh, personal use, because um, I was able to gather dirt and it actually got quite heavy. So thinking about this challenge of ergonomics, what are the physical burdens that we might carry in getting to know another? Finally, our third provocation is the hand substrate interface a glove with embedded sensors that can be used to detect information about the substrate to support fungal growth. And here we're drawing from this idea of that farmers and gardeners use their hands as a way to gather information about the environment. And we're also inspired by work in data gloves that build for building in digital interfaces specifically for the hand, such as the Mimu gloves for live audio visual control. So sensors already do exist for soil sensing. This is an example of one. As you can see though, it has rigid parts with components um, that sense changes in capacitance in relation to moisture. So we are curious, could we translate to the hand? Can we translate this to the hand? The short answer is yes. We are able to deconstruct a, so a standard soil moisture sensor and rebuild it into the hand. No, it's not as reliable as the rigid soil moisture sensor, but it does offer you something else. 
Um, it becomes this portable wearable sensor that asks you to engage with the substrate itself. But as you can see here, our initial prototype was a gardening glove, and it actually creates, well, it does create this, uh, it creates this barrier in which you might have this digital sensing, but you also can't actually feel the dirt. So this led to a series of material explorations in which we were experimenting with mesh, window screen, laundry bags. Um, this, these are all pictures of my hand. And finally, we settled on a design using a combination of neoprene, leather, and lightweight mesh to kind of create a, to create a interface that while simultaneously gaining digital information, we could actually still feel how wet that dirt was. So building, being able to collect, um, have this light indicator to show levels of moisture, but at the same time, being able to use the, uh, be able to kind of get into the dirt. And unlike the standard soil moisture, soil moisture sensor, the use is strangely intimate. You actually need to get down into the dirt. You actually need to stick your two fingers into the dirt, wiggle around in order to get that reading. But you know, this is not just about the hand or the focus of the tool. There's a person attached to that tool. And in this case, that person is me, also experiencing that context. How do the experiences set by the design of the tool change these relationships we have to these particular contexts? What does it mean to have to crouch down in the dirt and stick your fingers in the earth to get to know another? In this project, I asked myself to engage in these practices through the tools I built, a self-reflective experience in understanding the relationships I can build with a more than human world. To recap, I built an outfit of sorts set out for noticing fungi. But it's not really about the tools or looking really great for your foray. It's about this process of what I got to know out of what I, uh, what did I get out of knowing fungi, the sensitization to myself of aspects of the 4A, and thinking about how technologies may hinder or help with this practice. It's a story about, my, uh, about me as a designer and wanting to getting to know fungi. And of course, as a provocation, you always ask, or I, I always ask myself, what do these provocations actually provoke? So it's this inquiry of expanding our ways of recognizing non-humans through design, using collaborative survival as a guiding point, and shifting the attention off of solely human-centered concerns to one that seeks a more than human world. We can, we can begin to ask, what makes us human? Perhaps this can be one way to approach the complex problems of these times, of these times which in which we're responsible for in a way. We're also building these interventions that reimagine new roles in relationship with technology and other humans. Through these three provocations, we honor the many forms that fungi may take. And of course, there's always this aspect of, what do we do next? In fact, this does open up a lot of questions I have in my own work going forward. This project doesn't even begin to address the social environmental issues addressed at the beginning. It opens up other questions I have, and it lays down the groundwork to raise these different types of questions. What, and one of these questions include, what responsibilities do we as a community, as, uh, as designers, researchers, and technologists um, have? And one thing that I would like to discuss here is the limit, these limitations. So I use smart textiles, and even though we're building these new te technologies to understand this more than human world, at the same time, textiles and electronic components are two of the largest waste producers, and I also have this enormous environmental impact. So I'm asking us, I'm asking myself, how can we more critically consider the materials that we use and the processes that we partake in? And even more broadly, how do we work as a community in these precarious times towards a more livable and just future? And it's not just one solution. I think it's gonna be a series of multiple approaches from multiple voices, something that we've seen at CHI so far this year. And this project is just one approach, hoping to kindle further work in this vein, but we have to start somewhere, no matter how small. And to wrap up this talk, I present another quote that embraces a sense of hope and encouraging small access pathways to larger change from another great American wordsmith, the boss himself, you can't start a fire, you can't start a fire without a spark, from Bruce Springsteen. Thank you. Oh, really? Yeah, please shout. 
disconnect this while you're doing So it's been really interesting to like in the process of reflection because as someone who's been trained as an artist and designer and like a technologist, <clears throat> you realize you've been trained in certain ways to, to prototype, to build things. So I think it becomes this really interesting way of like how can we rethink how we're, 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 how we've been taught and even like how, and as someone who's worked in education, like thinking about how we can use this as points to go, to go forward to and teaching for future generations. So, um, 